This crisis is really revealing those with poor financial habits, especially in job opportunities are less and paychecks are getting reduced. That's why articles like this are servicing. Two in three Singaporeans do not have enough to last for six months. Six months only, and yet they do not have enough. In Malaysia, cash trap Malaysians are actually pawning with jewelry for cash. Now, if you have been saving poorly, this video hits you at the right time. If you've been saving well, share this video, share this message with friends who can benefit because today we are touching on seven key habits that can keep anyone poor. Hi guys, welcome back. Now in any case, these are seven bad habits, so please avoid them at all costs. The first starts with this, this you only live once mindset, YOLO mindset. This acronym YOLO, we've seen it quite a lot, especially the younger generation. They have this you only live once kind of a rah-rah kind of mindset and they're going for partying, going for booze, going for clubs, etc. etc. And do you know that each party, each club that they visit, they spend on average $81 and they don't only go for once a week. So when you add the sums, easily 700 a month is actually spent going for clubs, going for partying. And not only is money spent, valuable time is wasted. Valuable time that can be used, you know, watching this, watching valuable content that helps them in self-development. So these, these problems lie at the heart of this YOLO mindset. YOLO also affects other things, such as choice of holiday. Some of them actually spend massively on holidays, insta-worthy trips, while they're actually not bringing good enough incomes. So again, when they spend on expensive trips, very little is safe for the, for the retirement, for their future. And that again stems on the fact of this YOLO, you only live on mindset, so avoid that at all costs. The second problematic habit to totally avoid is this habit of not tracking where your money is going. Now, this plays on in a few ways. The first is actually you have a lot of monthly subscriptions that you're not even aware that is draining away your money. And one golden one is actually gym memberships. Now, I have even friends, close friends, who actually took on gym memberships and yet they visit like less than once a month. I have even this previous article. Are gym memberships a waste of money? If you're keen, look for it below. But I have some key points from that. The key point is half of Britons actually go to gym when they have a regular membership. And what about in Australia? 27% of them go less than once a week. Now that goes to show gym membership is often underutilized. And that is why this mindset of really having a lot of membership subscriptions, a lot of monthly payment outs are really draining away your finances and that's where a lot of your money is being lost. Not only that, look for this. If you're not tracking your money well, look for apps that can help you track your money better. One typical app is actually Seedly in Singapore. CD has this app, you can key in your things, start tracking your money and you realize that your monies are running all over the place. Once you take the effort to consolidate them, you start to realize that, hey, this is unnecessary or this is an overpayment or this has a cheaper alternative. So this mindset of not tracking your money must be avoided. Let's move on to the next point. Now, before I get to the third habit, I have this previous video to introduce to you. This 50, 30, 20 budgeting rule, especially if you're a millennial, look for that video. I'll leave links below just in case you're keen to find that tutorial to understand on how you can allocate budgets to become more successful financially. Let me show you this by dollars and cents. This actually is how much a couple needs to earn before they can afford a house. And I've surveyed before many young couples, they're looking for five room flats. My main habit that I'm suggesting to you today is don't look for a flat as the maximum of how much you can borrow because very often you leave yourself very little behind to do investments. So young couples very often just starting work, their combined income is 8,000 and looking for a five room flat. What happens? They max out their loan, they have very little cash flow, free cash flow, free CPF OA to do investments. Then what happens is they cannot, cannot build for retirement. They cannot really achieve financial freedom that easily because a lot of money is tied towards mortgage. Something interesting to scroll to the bottom, let's pull up again. You'll see that bungalow and good class bungalow. Wow, how much does it require in terms of salary? 36 to 73,000 each per month. Now, just in case you haven't, you haven't really realized, the rich play with different set of rules. They have special loans that they can get access. They can pledge assets differently. They don't always use income to get loans. So this is something to think about. This is something actually by 99.co. It actually shows that if you're keen, look for links below again. But again, there are different ways to approach finances. So don't think there's only a fixed method because the rich play for a different mindset. So now let's move on to the fourth habit. And that fourth habit is also something interesting, which is you should never spend more as you start to increase your pay. Now, are you aware that there's a risk that you spend more as you earn more? 
If you're not too sure, let me introduce you to Parkinson's Law. Parkinson's Law states that no matter how much money you earn, you tend to spend the entire amount and leave little behind. Your expenses can rise in lockstep with your earnings. Now this is lifestyle inflation. This affects a lot of people. I've even seen before friends who are trapped in this cycle. Why? As you earn a bit more, you start to realize that you should get a same car model as your ex-boss. Then you're buying and upgrading your car. As you are as you're getting promoted, you realize that you should dress better than ever before. If not, you still continue to look like a junior staff. And that affects office ladies a lot. And that is that is why Parkinson's law affects everybody unless you become aware of it. That is why I always have a few methods to really postpone lifestyle inflation. One method that I've learned is to actually postpone purchases at least for another day. So if you're looking to buy this particular cloth, this particular dress, wait for another day before you purchase because when you have impulse buying, you're looking to spend and look good and upgrade yourself, that's where you actually get trapped in the cycle. The fifth habit that keeps anyone poor relates to vices. Vices include cigarettes, of course. Smoking is one of the most expensive vice and in Singapore, there's so much tobacco tax. This is actually done by Sidley. Let me pull up for you to quickly see. They have done a survey and what they found out is heavy smokers spend 3,500 to 5,001 a year on cigarettes. And not only that in Singapore, there's always fines. That's why they've added additional 1,600 in terms of fines per year. That is hilarious. That means like $6,000 a year is gone. 500 a month gone purely on cigarettes. If you're a smoker and looking to save, I'm sure you've heard of this saying before to, you know, dump the cigarettes. It's hard, but take note of how much it's costing you. In any case, I do insurance planning. And what I can share with you is, smoker rates are at least 50%, 50% more expensive than standard life rates. Is it worth it? I don't know. Another vice that's common is also in alcohol. Alcohol is also heavily taxed in Singapore. And this is actually a chart, pretty interesting. It goes to show you that they project year-on-year -year growth in terms of alcohol revenue. This is done by Statista. And from 2020 to 2023, 12% compounded annual growth rate, which means they're actually charging people more and more. Such a lucrative business, which means money costs, costs to you. So I've also this something very interesting to show you. So Singapore alcohol industry is ranked number 10 attractive in Asia. Wow. If it's attractive to them, the sellers means it's bad to you because you're spending a lot of money. Who are the number one and number two? I thought it was interesting. South Korea and China. No wonder I see a lot of Chinese drinking a lot of beer in People's Park in Chinatown and they're actually spending a lot of money there, a lot of hard-earned money there. So if you're looking to cut back and save, alcohol has all along been a big drain in your finances. So kick that habit and you'll never be poor. The sixth habit that keeps anyone poor is actually also a vice and it's gambling. I separated it out because gambling is a big problem to Asian cultures. There are many ways to gamble, Toto, 4D, buying soccer, going to the casino, etc, etc. But gambling is a big problem. Gambling drains away families' resources. And if you don't really know, I pulled this up for you to see. Gambling participation rate is up in Singapore. This is 2018. Hopefully it's a bit lower. I don't know. But I've always had this thing. If you play with friends, you never go broke. You can play mahjong, you can play card games with your friends. You never go broke. But once you play with the house, when you go, go to the casino, you realize you can blow a lot of money. If you know of any friends who are addicted to gambling, I also strongly suggest get them excluded from casino, get them to understand the problems. Because gambling actually affects a lot of families, unfortunately. But gambling comes in another form also, which is speculation on the stock market. I think this is understated. A lot of people blow a lot of money on stock market simply because they're buying things they don't understand. They're taking on company risks, buying a share, buying a hot tip from a friend, and a lot of money can be lost. There's no intention to gamble, but the end result is very similar. So take note of it. Gambling is a big problem. Gambling is a bad habit that can keep anyone poor. The seventh key point is something very broad and I kept it to the end because I think it's one of the most important and understated points. And before that, help me smash on the like button so more people can see this. And again, inviting you to smash on the subscribe, join our community, become more financially savvy because we're launching videos every week to help you in your financial journey. The seventh key point is not really a habit. It's the wrong financial mindset. Now, a lot of times, this is not our fault. A lot of times, this can be attributed to upbringing. And one of the common points that anyone poor has is they dislike rich people. They have all these kind of negative thoughts that rich people are special, rich people are not generous, rich people are filthy. These are wrong financial mindsets. When you don't like that, 
you won't become that. That is why this mindset thing is understated in a lot of ways. Some of the other wrong advice typically given by Asian parents is you can save yourself to become rich, save up money and become rich. It is never a case. Saving does not get you to become rich. It only avoids, helps you avoid poverty. But to get to rich status, you need to do investments. So these are little, little mindset things. While it doesn't keep anyone poor, these are mindset problems that can be changed. Some key notes to take. The first, take into context who you take advice from. Are they successful financially? If you don't want to be poor, don't take advice from people who are poor. It doesn't make sense, correct? Take advice from the right people because they always say you are the, clo- you are the average of the five people closest to you. And to end things with, I have this from Oprah Winfrey. Surround yourself only with people who are going to lift you higher. This is very important. If you want to become richer, get out of being poor, all these methods, all these mindsets need to be corrected. Surround yourself with the right people and you realize that you can start soaring. With that, I'll end the video. I hope you liked it. Leave any comments you have. I'll pick up each and every one of them. With that, I'll sign off. Take care and goodbye.